What's up fellow collectors? Welcome back. Today might be Master Toy Misa. I'll be a curator today. Guys, more fun. More excitement from the museum today. Here on a very early, early Friday morning. Hanging out down here in the museum. Guys, we're picking up speed with our 2003 G.I. Joe Chronicles, part three. Our carded figures from 2003 for G.I. Joe. And this is part three of our Chronicles series uh, that has really gotten a lot of positive feedback from our viewers, our subscribers. Uh, we're really excited uh, about this series. You know, it really, uh, it's, one, one subscriber told me that, you know what, there should be a book made on all of the figures that Hasbro put out for G.I. Joe, you know, all the way back from 91, all the way up to 2005. Really, uh, you know, putting that in chronic, lot of chronological order, guys. Sorry, I'm still working on that first cup of coffee. <laughs> Tongue twister. But he's got a great point. And he said that, you know what, these videos are really helping him see exactly what was put out during those those years. And guys, that's our that's our our goal here at the MIB Master Toy Museum to really to, to kind of uh, give a listing, if you will, a year-by-year -year listing of the figures that Hasbro put out for G.I. Joe during that time period, carded, boxed, gift sets, two-pack sets, you name it. But getting a little ahead of ourselves, we want to just focus on the year 2003, which was a good year for uh, G.I. Joe. They had a ton of figures. And you're seeing here just uh, about f five of uh, the ones that I, I want to pick out today for this video. That really caught my eye. I uh, went to the archives. And um, these, these five kind of caught my eye. So, you know, let's go with these five today. And first and foremost, we'll start with our Air Force, G.I. Joe Air Force Special Forces, G.I. Joe, carded figure. Uh, this is a fantastic G.I. Joe. I'm surprised this one didn't come more in a deluxe box. He did come, however, he was packaged in a, a thinner uh, basic box, if you will. Um, very cheap box. So the carded figure, to me, was is, was more expensive. More deluxe, for sure. Hasbro did a lot of that repackaging, these figures. Same figure, different package. But this is the one I got. headset on here weapon in hand there's the gung-ho grip hands they painted them to kind of simulate gloves like I said beautiful head sculpt and this is from the Strategic Operations Forces Collection. Get your blown out look of you. Just really, really a, a, a fantastic figure. Really a, um, love this figure for a lot of reasons. The outfit, the head sculpt, the weapons, you name it. Uh, this figure, to be a carded figure... Really had it all. A 
Let's get you a um, shot of the back here. A little background history here on the Air Force Special Forces. You can pause your uh, your video. Some good reading there. It's a great shot of Joe with his weapon. Let's get you a year. 2003 and look at our rope and rescue fighter fighter that was to also look for and we did that one if you saw our part two video the rope rescue firefighter was in that video here's interesting instructions included but yet they have a a piece of tape over that reasons i don't know when I bought it, it was just like that. See, another reason why, you know, having these, these beautiful figures still in their packaging, it tells so much more of the story behind these beautiful figures. And it's outfit, it's poncho, everything, it's just... It's just Woodland outfit, I should say. It's just it's so fantastic. And here, if you look here on the side here, you got the equipment list. Coat with hood, headset, boots, PSG-1, marksman rifle, spotting scope, ammo clip, and bipod. So this, this, this is the uh, spotting scope here. Not to mention everything else he's got here. He's got a scope on his gun already. Uh, beautifully done guys you just joining us we're having some fun down here in the museum today on a very early friday morning just taking it all in enjoying our our part three series of the chronicles of 2003 gi joe carded figures and this is a little bit of a different one here let's bring him front and center here this is our marine corps Boxer. This figure is, was, is, and still is, and was at the time off the radar. Very hard to find. A very obscure figure. Uh, a good buddy of mine named RV really uh, loves this this figure uh, RV served in the military so he knows all about this and he's a boxer on top of that so uh, he definitely connects with this particular uh, Marine Corps uh, boxer GI Joe got his gloves on gloves didn't cover up the whole hand as you could see This is one of these figures where, you know, I thought when I first saw this figure, I said, well, maybe Hasbro is running out of ideas. Um, but that was not the case. This this figure, you know, to be as obscure as it is, had and still has a, a, a huge following. A lot of people want this figure. They're looking for this figure. I've seen this figure on eBay uh, once or twice in the last maybe 10 or 11 years. And uh, they're they're asking crazy prices for this figure. I believe this figure, I, I paid maybe 12 or $13, and that's with tax for this figure. I don't think I, I paid that much for this figure at the time that I bought it. As you can see, it's on a smaller card from the rest of the, the Joes up here, uh, maybe outside of my Valor versus Venom uh, figure. But the Marine Corpse Boxer figure, very obscure. You know, he comes with his headgear, spring water bottle, gloves, 
uh, naturally the championship belt. You know, he's he's a champion. Dog tags. He's got his um, marine. Uh, you see, he's got the the molded painted T-shirt, but they gave him a real shirt as well. Tank top with the marines on it. And real boxing shorts, trunks. Got Marines on it. You see, he's got the American flag on it. He's got um, here yellow piping coming down here. The coolest thing about this figure, about this G.I. Joe, and I, you know, Hasbro did this maybe once or twice throughout the years, and that's how rare they did it, you know. Not not very often. But the legs are bendable, made of that, that bendy material. So he didn't have the standard uh, legs that these figures have. Bendy material legs. Painted on socks here. You can see the dots there where the legs bend is that type of material very strange very strange and very unique all unto its own you see he's locked in there really good secured in uh, love this head sculpt on our marine corpse boxer but yeah those legs are are very rare for this time period of a gi joe um, I wonder why they did that. I'm not. I'm not certain, but um, it once again it just makes this figure that much more unique and sought after. Let's turn this guy around and get you a back shot here of our Marine Corps boxer. There he is in all of his glory. He's holding up the championship belt. He just won the championship, guys. Just won it. I love the fact that they they pose the actual figure what you're getting. Now those those legs we talked about. Let's get you a year here. 2003. Some poses may require hand support. I'm not surprised with these types of legs that they they used. And here's the background history on the Marine Corps uh boxer. I'm going to pause your video there. Guys, your thoughts, your opinions. We want to hear it all. Here on a Friday, here at the museum, our 2003 Carded G.I. Joe Chronicles continues, part three. Here's a very cool one. Uh, one that I absolutely positively had to have. The G.I. Joe Valor vs. Venom series. Our high-tech. Uh, beautiful artwork here for high-tech. High-tech is a very unique figure to me as well. Um, he comes with an, a, an array, an assortment of plug-in connect-type Weapons. Outside of the cloth good, uh, his uh, pants are cloth goods. Everything is plastic. Molded plastic. And this is a very unique head sculpt. As a matter of fact, a uh, high-tech head sculpt is very unique. I've never seen it sculpted before. Uh, I don't think they've, it's been recast for anybody else. Uh, any other G.I. Joe figure. In the last 10, 15 years that G.I. Joe was making figures. And it, that Hasbro was making figures. This is the only time I've seen this head sculpt. Now, if I'm wrong, you know, hey, leave it in the comment section. Say, hey, MIB, we've seen that head sculpt again and 
tell me where you saw it at and what fi which figure and maybe I can do my research. Maybe we have one here in a museum. That's how many guys, that's how many figures I have. And that's how that that that's that's how much craziness I have going on over here. I'm I'm truly blessed in a crazy way to have all these figures. Like you just you you lose uh touch with some of these figures. That's what I'm saying. I, I need a, a better numbering system here at the museum. I'm, we're working on one. Uh with high tech here though, back to him. His head um calm if you want to call it that that earpiece actually sticks into his ear so there's a hole there in the ear where you can connect that earpiece to you see he's got his mouthpiece here he's going to talk into he's locked in there really good and every weapon just connects and we'll you know I would like to think that they included some uh, some instructions in there to show you how Maybe it's on the back. We'll check it out. Uh, the selling point was this, this this belt and all of the weapons and this head sculpt. He just, and guys, when I say he's heavy, he's extremely heavy. Way more heavier. Oh, not too much, but this, this guy's heavy too. I think because all the, the plastic they used, this is solid here. Those legs are. But this guy is extremely heavy. Very heavy. Love the boots. Artwork. On packaging goes a long way it goes a long way let's turn high-tech around you want another shot at those boots very unique boots get your blown out look there's high-tech the actual figure being posed and we talked about this new packaging system you're gonna have to do that with high tech because I don't know the cart being glued to the bubble this figure is so heavy I don't think it would have stayed I think it would have torn its way away from the card at some point if you know by handling it too much especially for MIB collectors such as myself you know who really don't handle their figures or the packagings of the figures anyway a, a ton But here's high tech with all the weapons. See on the side of the arm, he's got the logo here. Nearest includes here the figures, pants, boots, belt with holster, headset, and weapon pieces. I remember back in the early 80s, 81, 82, when, um, say right around 82, when the, the three three quarter inch uh, GI Joes came out on the back of the cards they had the, uh, the identification identification cards for each you know GI Joe each character and it gave you a, a breakdown of each character and here you see high tech all this information on him get you a year here 2003. Here's a backstory on high tech. Guys, your thoughts, your opinions, right in the comment section, guys. We want to hear it here on a Friday, just hanging out. Uh, this is fun for me, guys, uh, to be able to see these guys. Hey, like I said, I don't get a chance. And I know some of you guys think that, you know, the only thing I do is make videos and live in my museum. And that's not the case. I do have a life outside of the museum. Uh, <laughs> a very busy life, I might add. But I don't get a chance to see these guys. A lot you know some of these guys are, are in storage um, they're packed away I can't display every figure that I have and I know that's you know that that's a problem every all of us as collectors have we would love to just put everything out 
where we can walk around and look at everything and see everything but that's not the case so I get a chance actually now to to, to kind of visit these guys from time to time and bring them out like I said I haven't had this guy out uh, a lot of these figures out in in a while it's been, it's been for some of these guys probably years but uh let's um let's move this guy over here let's put high tech over here okay here's the what I call the two brothers and the reason I call them two brothers is because they're variants um actually uh this is the original regular one and this was the variant one and these is our these are our tactical advisors and they are as well a part of the strategic operation forces uh collection the SOF and then you can see they got a poster inside this is the first one i got and the selling point on this figure was the fact that he had the lifelike hair and beard as you can see they you know Hasbro threw that on him same with our variant and this was known as the black sweater variant everything's the same outside of the fact that one has a black hat and a black sweater and the other one has a tan hat and a tan sweater um, I learned later on that there was a variant to this. I, I believe somebody told me um, that, you know what, they have a variant to the tactical advisor. I believe I, somebody told me that, or I, I bought it at the same time, something like that. Uh, as the years go on, like I said, this is two, these guys are from 2003, so where we're at now, 2022, you're talking about nearly a 20 year old figures. These figures are getting up, getting up there in age, so so am I <laughs> so my memory not quite as sharp as it was 20 years prior but it's, it's still pretty sharp like I said the selling point was the fact that he had a ton of gear and really cool sneakers that were rehashed on the G.I. Joe Army and Navy football players so they just threw these, these sneakers really cool sneakers on on our tactical advisor G.I. Joe's uh, weapons galore machine gun here another machine gun knife little sheath there um, standard uh, pistol here with the, the thigh holster you know I, I love the thigh holsters tactical glasses here some more weapons there gung-ho grip hands and he's in here nice and snug like I said uh, and then back here you have uh, the poster if you look direct where my fingers pointing at you see the G.I. Joe poster back here of the actual figure and I, I think Back in the day, a lot of the collectors, the G.I. Joe collectors, wanted the, the posters from the back where, you, you know, you had the guy, the, the, the figure actually posed and will turn him around. They wanted posters of these guys, so they kept writing in to the G.I. Joe club and to see if they can get Hasbro to do it. And here's a great shot here. Let's bring him out a little bit more closer here of our tactical advisor we have the dark hair this is the, the blonde here one right here great information here on the tactical advisor you want to pause your video and then you can look for the G.I. Joe SOF collection and we just showed you here the tactical advisor, which had the forward air control, mountain search, MSPF Marine. Let's get you a year, 2003. It's 
Fantastic. And basically you have the same setup here. Let's bring him close in. The same as, as, the same as his brother, basically. Everything is identical outside of the fact that he has a black sweater and a black hat on. But because he has that black sweater and a black hat on, I absolutely positively had to have him. Now I like to think he's got his dog chains Dog tags, I'm sorry, his dog tags. You can't see it though, because he's got his, they're probably tucked underneath his, um, underneath his sweater. But, beautiful head sculpt here. We talked about those different head sculpts. And these guys sport the same head sculpt. They're just different with the, uh, with the hair color. What a good shot of those sneakers. Those sneakers look so cool. You can, well, here you can see a good shot of the poster inside. Let's turn this guy around. See, the, no difference in the back. The same. And you say, MIB, why? Why buy both of them when they're basically the same figure? Uh, variants, I, I love variants. I love variants. And just for the fact, simple fact that I knew that, uh, this variant actually was out there and it actually existed, I had to have it. For nothing more than just having to have it, to own it and have it in my museum collection, my G.I. Joe collection. That's it. I would like to give you some really uh, just just high extreme reasoning behind it or some really that make, makes me sound a lot smarter than what I really am. <laughs> but I have no other reason, no basis, just for the fact that he was out there and I can afford him. <laughs> that, was, that was it. And he was just cool. So, and... You know, nearly 20 years later, you can actually see that there was a variant of him, of this particular figure. There was a variant of him out there that actually existed. And you get a chance to see that. You know, now I wasn't thinking like that 20 years prior, but 20 years later, it makes a lot of sense. Now that I, I am a museum cur curator and I own a museum for toys. See, I, I made it make, make it sound like a lot more sense than it, it originally did. So I'm pretty proud of myself, guys. <laughs> Let's bring this guy here. I'm gonna put him here. This is the problem, trying to stage everything. Let me bring him back over this way. There, slide him over a little bit so he doesn't fall. Guys, we'd like to thank you for hanging out with us today. Stay tuned for more G.I. Joe action. It's right around the corner. I keep telling you about this big announcement, and it, it is coming, guys. I have a big announcement. I'm just trying to get all of my uh, T's crossed and my I's dotted before I give you this big announcement. So stay tuned, guys. More fun. Don't taint, change that channel. You know the routine. God bless. Stay safe. And keep collecting.